Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation. We have a cubed plus a equals 350, and we're gonna be solving for a values. So you can definitely solve this problem using the cubic formula, but I have a better idea. So let's start by factoring 350. We can first of all write it as seven times 50. And then 50 is 49 plus one. And what is significant about that is 49 is seven to the second power and seven is seven to the first power. So we can now write 49 as seven to the second power. And then we can go ahead and distribute the seven over the seven squared plus one, just like variables. This becomes seven to the third plus seven. And what are you looking at? You're looking at the cube of a number plus the same number. And of course, that's what we have on the left-hand side as well. So let's go ahead and replace 350 with a cubed plus a. So what do you have now? You have a cubed plus a equals seven cubed plus seven, which means if a equals seven, this equation works, which means a equals seven is a solution. Awesome. Now at this point, you have a couple of different options. Since you know that a equals seven works, you can go ahead and try to factor the original expression by using that fact, so you can kind of break it down like a cubed, and then you can follow by minus seven a squared because our goal is to get a minus seven because the factor theorem tells us that if a equals seven is a solution, then a minus seven must be a factor. So that gives us a minus seven if you factor out a squared, right? But then you have to add seven a squared because we didn't have it in the first place. And then of course this needs to be followed by 49 a, and then we do need a 50a, why? Because we have an existing a, which is one a in our equation, and then finally, minus 350. Great, now if you factor this by grouping, you're gonna realize that a minus seven is always a factor, which is good, right? We knew that because a equals seven is a solution, but this kind of verifies this one more time, and now you can go ahead and factor out a minus seven, and the other factor will automatically appear as a squared plus seven a plus 50. And then by setting this equal to zero, you're gonna be able to solve all the solutions because you get a quadratic, which is very easy to solve. And by using the quadratic formula, if you solve it, you're gonna get a equals negative seven, and the discriminant is gonna be negative 151, which is, by the way, 151 is a prime number, so when you you can't really break it down anymore, so we're gonna write it with the i because we have complex solutions, non-real complex solutions. And of course, a equals seven is the only real solution. But here's a million dollar question. Why do we have one real solution and two non-real solutions? Let's go ahead and take a look at that, and then I'm gonna show you an alternative way of solving this problem, which I think is a lot easier. So, let's consider a function f of x, as x cubed plus x. Now what happens if you go ahead and set equal, and the reason behind that is my expression on the left hand side is this, so I just made up a function that takes the value of a cubed plus a at x equals a. Does that make sense? Now I'm going to go ahead and differentiate this function because why not? And when we do, we notice something interesting. x squared is always greater than or equal to zero, which is 3x squared also. And then if you add one to both sides, we get three x squared plus one is greater than or equal to one, but of course one is greater than zero. This automatically implies through the transitive property that three x squared plus one is always greater than zero, which means it can never be negative, it can't be zero either, which means that the first derivative of a function is positive. This means f of x is always increasing. And what is that supposed to mean? Well, if a cubic function is always increasing, a horizontal line can only intersect that once, which means we have one real solution. You get the idea? Okay, now let's go back to our equation and let's kind of pick up from where we wrote a cubed plus a equals seven cubed plus seven. Because if you don't distribute, if you don't use the original problem, this is gonna be a lot easier. Take a look. Let's subtract seven cubed and seven. And now this allows you to factor directly because this is a difference of two cubes. And this is obviously already factored, right? You can just use a one. So now if you factor this using difference of two cubes, I hope you know the formula, a minus seven 
times a squared plus 7a plus 49, which is 7 squared, plus 1 times a minus 7 equals 0. And this gives you the same thing, a minus 7 is a factor, and then you'll get a squared plus 7a plus 49 plus 1, which is plus 50 equals 0. And then you're going to go ahead and see the exact same solutions as before, because we got the same equations, right? So these are going to be our solutions, two non-real and one real solution for this cubic equation. Again, we use factoring to find that. You, of course, you could use the rational root theorem, but good luck with that because 350 has a lot of factors, as you can imagine, right? And now here's the graph uh, I was talking about. This is the graph of x cubed plus x. And as you can see here, it is intersected by the horizontal line. Let's call that g of x equals 350 at exactly one point because our cubic is always, always increasing. There's no way it's going to be intersected one more time. That's why the other two solutions are not real. And guess what? This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.